All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a little bit of time to take really just kind of an introductory look at some of the particle volume shaders found in Soft Image. Okay, so the name of this scene that we're going to be working with is called Particle Rendering Overview Part 1. Now, this is really just the same smokestack simulation that we had built over the course of our last uh, couple of lessons. So if we were to come in and draw out a render region, just press and hold the Q key on your keyboard, click and drag, and once this renders out, you can see that we're basically using just the default scene material on these particles, just the default Fong. So with these point clouds, we can actually use any kind of material found in Soft Image, the Blends, Lamberts, Fongs, and so on. Now, if we wanted to render something, though, that is a little bit more uh, kind of a cloudy appearance, something like a uh, smokestack or a string of clouds, we probably want something that is a little bit more volumetric in appearance and really not anywhere near this solid. So if we want to try to render out those kinds of surfaces, there are actually some uh, pre-built shaders that are built specifically for this volumetric rendering. Now, within Softimage, there's actually a couple of different ways that we can apply these types of materials. So one way is to just simply select your point cloud, go up to uh, either Model, Animate, Render, or one of these other menus, and we want to get to the Get Material, because you'll notice there's actually no Get Material in the Simulate menu. So Get Material, and like I said, we can actually use any of these pre-built, uh, Fong, Lambert, Blin, and so on, and then we can start to make the uh, volumetric connections inside of the render tree. The other option that we have is to use the Ice Particle Volume Material, which will do a lot of the work for us. It'll make a lot of the connections in the render tree, and it will utilize a lot of pre-built compounds that have a lot of individual nodes contained inside them. So this is really the easy way to do it. This will give you a great starting point and uh, take a lot of the work out of it for you. However, I'm not going to start by showing you this. What I first want to do is make sure that you understand a lot of the individual nodes contained inside of this and really understand how they all fit together. So before we get into this, let's kind of take the long way. So let's start with something like a constant or really any of these materials. Connect that in. And if we're to take just a quick render, what we should see is this particle actually using this constant material, which is exactly what we should have. So now to connect in the volumetric effects, let's open up the render tree. So select your point cloud, go to view, rendering and texturing, and take a look inside the render tree, or you can just press the seven key on your keyboard. Okay, so here's our constant. Now if we take a look over in the particle section of the render tree, we see we actually do have quite a few nodes that we can start to drop in here. So let's start with something like the particle volume cloud. Let's click and drag this in. Connect this into the volume port of our material. And let's take a look at what we have. Okay, you'll notice that as this render is starting to progress, that we actually don't see any of the volumetric results. We're still seeing that constant material. So this is an issue that you might see if you're using Softimage 2011. And this is actually not what we should be seeing. So fortunately, this is, this is a pretty easy thing to fix. All we have to do is simply select the point cloud, go into the Selection Explorer, and let's take a look inside the particle display. Okay, so really what's happening, though, is just a simple refresh issue. So this is still rendering the old particle information, and all we have to do is really just force this to update. So in the point cloud display, let's set this from automatic to anything else, something like point, and then we could always just set that back to automatic. Now this is actually what we should be seeing, believe it or not, just the basic bounding box of these point clouds. All right, perfect. So this is essentially what the particle volume is going to be responsible for. All right. Now, within this particle volume cloud, we do have a lot of attributes within this. So density controls, color controls, um, shadowing controls, things like that. Now, within the density, we do have a few basic controls for uh, the overall density, but it's really not getting the look of these individual particles. It's really just rendering out this block of volume. So, what we have to do is actually use another node. This particle volume cloud is really not meant to be used strictly by itself. It really needs to be used in conjunction with another node, and usually that node is the particle density. So, all we have to do is take this particle density, take the density output, 
and plug that into the density input of our particle volume cloud. And now, once this renders, we can start to see some of the individual particles of our simulation, which is exactly what we should get. So I'll play this through for a few frames. Render this out. All right, excellent. So let's come in, and I'm just going to try to uh, kind of rearrange this so that this is a little bit easier to see. All right, so I'll render this out. Now let's take a look at some of the attributes found in this particle density. So we do have quite a few attributes in here as well. And within this, we can start to control things like density textures, which really don't appear to be doing a whole lot at this point. Uh, but in, here in our next couple of lessons, we'll start to look at how we can actually begin plugging some textures into these inputs, and we can start to get some really, really nice results. So this is essentially just uh, controlling the overall density of whatever texture we use, but since we don't have anything plugged in, there's really not a whole lot to be seen. We can also control the uh, density of the shape. So as we start to dial this back, we can now start to see a little less of a stretch or a little bit less of a uh, uh, kind of a blending appearance between some of these individual points. Instead, we start to see uh, the shading happening in a much, much smaller area. Versus if we start to now increase this shape, that shading now starts to reach a little bit further out from the center of that particle. And as we start to get a little bit further out, it'll shade just more and more toward the outside to the point where it starts to kind of blend and give us a little bit smoother result. Now within this, we also have controls for density of this texture. So as we start to drop this down to a really, really low value, we should start to see now a little bit more kind of transparency within this. So it starts to give us now a real thin kind of look of smoke. Versus if we start to raise this up, that starts to give us this really, really thick uh, kind of billowy clouds, really, really thick smoke appearance. So whichever value you find yourself having to use, you can use that. We also have within this um, texture coordinates, shape and rotation. These really won't become apparent until we start to actually uh, begin plugging textures into this. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave these as they are. So the main thing to keep in mind is that really just like the name suggests, this particle density node is going to uh, control a lot of the attributes that are responsible for the density of these individual particles and just how thick or how thin they appear. Now within the particle volume cloud, a lot of the attributes found in here are going to be responsible for things like the shading of these particles, so the coloration, the shading, uh, things like that. Now we do have within the particle volume cloud a global density control as well. Now at first glance you might think that this is doing the exact same thing as the uh, density found over here in the particle density node, but it's actually not. Uh, what we have is a situation where basically this particle density, it's taking everything that we've set inside of this attribute and it's just simply piping it into this density input of our particle volume cloud. So really all that's doing is uh, having an effect on the attributes that are contained right up here. What we have below this is an additional density control that takes whatever effect has been piped in and starts to now lower the density of that even further. So really you can think of it as uh, this is lowering the density of the entire point cloud. Whereas over here, we're actually adjusting the density of whatever texture is connected in. And really what we should start to see is with a little bit higher value, we start to get a little bit more thickness within the center of this volume. Versus as we start to uh, kind of bring this down, that start now should start to bring a lot less density into the middle part of this volume. Right, so we'll have a chance to explore some of these attributes in a little bit more depth through some of our next few lessons, but for now I really just kind of want to uh, give you a chance to uh, kind of get familiar with some of these different attributes and just kind of understand how these different nodes connect together and why they need to be connected together in the way that they are. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to take a few minutes to point out a similar node, which is called the Particle Renderer. Now, all of these nodes that are contained down here that have this little purple icon next to them are called Compounds. Now, compounds are basically individual particles that have, or individual nodes, I should say, that have basically been packaged up and uh, really don't uh, have to connect a lot of additional nodes into them. So the particle renderer and the particle volume cloud are actually very similar. In fact, they're the exact same thing. The only difference is this particle renderer 
has both the particle volume cloud and the particle density packaged inside of it. So there's really no need to connect any kind of a particle density into this one. Now at first glance it can be difficult to uh, distinguish exactly what makes a uh, compound different from an individual node. Now it's really not the coloration because even though this uh, particle volume cloud is purple, this is not a compound, this is an individual node. The real distinguishing factor is that these compounds have this thick border contained around them, so kind of this thicker gray border. And you'll also notice that whenever you hover over an individual node, we have this V icon to actually view the result. Now if we hover over in a compound, we have the V, plus we have an E icon over on the opposite side. Now this will allow us to actually edit this compound and see the individual nodes contained inside of it. So if we take a look inside this compound, we have the particle density and the particle volume cloud connected exactly the same way, except we do have a couple of individual nodes in here uh, as well, just to kind of help with uh, some of this blending. But for the most part, this is the exact same thing. So whenever using this particle renderer, all we have to do is just simply drop it in and connect it into the volume port. And once we render that out, we can see the result. So, like I said, really no need to use the particle density on that because it's already contained inside of this compound. And I would say that for probably 80 to 90 percent of the situations that I've come across, I find that the particle renderer will work just fine. There's really uh, not a whole lot of need to use these individual particles or these individual nodes. So, if we take a look inside the particle renderer and take a look inside some of the attributes, what we should see is actually sort of a combination of the attributes found in both the particle density and the particle volume cloud. So you can see uh, within this we have the density tab, which has a lot of the attributes found in the particle density, as well as once we start to get into the volume color for things like uh, global tint, uh, diffuse, these are really the exact same attributes that we would normally find over in the color tab of our particle volume cloud. So it's really sort of nice because we do, uh, with this compound, just have access to the attributes that we really probably need to use most and really don't have to worry about a lot of additional attributes cluttering this up because, as you can see, there's a lot of attributes to be found between the particle volume cloud. So if you look at all these different tabs and if we take a look at the particle density, <laughs> there's also a lot of attributes found in here. So it can really be sort of confusing, especially when you first start out uh, and it can really be easy to be very overwhelmed and very quickly overwhelmed by just the sheer number of attributes that you have. So the particle render is a good way of kind of minimizing that and just kind of giving you access to the uh, attributes that you really need to have in front of you. But the nice thing is, because this is a compound, all we have to do is edit this. If for any reason we need to get in a little bit deeper and get a little bit more control, we can always come into any of these individual nodes. If we double click on the particle volume cloud, now we have access to all of those same exact attributes. So it gives us that ability to uh, dive in a little bit deeper and tweak some of these attributes that we may not have had access to just on the surface of this compound. All right, so this has been just a very, very quick introductory look at the particle volume cloud and the particle density node and understanding just how these two nodes have been packaged together to form the particle renderer compound.